So today we are talking basements and we're going to show you a video we shot a few years ago and we're going to discuss later how to get the most economical basement renovation that you can get and we're going to show you how to save a lot of money. I haven't run into a house yet that had square walls. I love working on these old homes. These are my bread and butter. I gotta say this floor is awfully comfortable. Wow. <laughs> wow, that's actually a rain cloud. We had all this space? The whole ground is heaving. Perfect, every time. Well, today we're talking basements. Um, got a lot of our clients asking us to finish the space in the basement for them. Um, so what we're doing today is we're in our, one of our homes. We're going to go over a basic basement renovation. Uh, the idea is, is we have a half constructed space that we're just going to finish. All right. So in this particular basement, um, about 20 years old, uh, the construction style of the day was such that they did full two by four construction to the floor, 16 inches on center, uh, regular bad insulation, what would be very traditional. More modern construction now, they're only framing halfway down, they're using a blanket wrap instead. So homes that are this age have an advantage because they can be almost finished from their current condition. Uh, you can see what we've done is we've just lifted up the plastic, uh, tucked up the insulation back under itself. This is just in preparation for our electrician, trying to minimize as much time as he has to be on the site. That way he can just drill his holes and run his wires without any, any hesitation. Uh, the process for finishing this is quite simple. Um, because they use kiln dry lumber, you can see that the wall is still pretty straight. Uh, we're just going to go around with a proper straight line level, uh, identify beams that are you know, warped or, or bent or pro improperly inst installed. You can see this one here, we've got lots of movement. What we're going to have to do here is just cut this beam straighten it out, throw in a shim and a screw, just fix it up. And then we're basically ready after the electrician's done to drywall the space. Um, in this kind of situation, there's not a whole lot of preparation to do outside of a couple of mechanical issues. Uh, like most basements, all of the heat runs come out of the ceiling. You can see over here, you've got a long run coming out of the ceiling. Uh, this particular heat run is here to kill the draft from the windows. But in other parts of the house, the heat runs are also in the ceiling for convenience. So what we have is a, we've framed this wall to isolate the living space from the furnace area. Uh, temporarily we have it covered in plastic just to keep the dust down. Uh, they have a mid efficiency furnace so they do have fresh air mixed with the air in the basement going through the house. So we're just doing this for dust control. But eventually what we'll do is that behind this wall we'll bring two heat runs down right to the floor. Um, basements it's very difficult to keep warm when you're in the seated position. Generally whatever heat comes from the ceiling uh, tends to come out halfway down and then start working his way back up again. So what we found is the best way is uh, not to just insulate the floor, but to bring the heat right to the floor. Um, and then on the other side of the room, we'll bring in a cold air return right to the floor, pulling the air across the floor, keeping the air that's warm at the, at the, as low as we can, as long as we can. Uh, there's a couple of things we have to overcome. One of them is the steel I-beams. The other one is duct work. And of course, we always have plumbing and wiring and air conditioning lines. Um, this air conditioning line comes right through the area that we're going to put our theater room in. So on this half of the bulkhead, we're going to have to strap our ceiling uh, an inch and a half, which is a solid two by four, and then we can put in our drywall. The rest of the room, we just have to go back with some one by threes, uh, 16 inch on center, of course, lots of screw surface for our drywall. And all of the rest of these beams will all have to be covered in boxes and drywall beam. Uh, this particular house is a typical construction. They have these new beams in here. They're basically laminated plywood layers. Um, they're very strong. Uh, they protect against deflection and they have extremely wide spacing. This is not a 16 inch on center. I think these are more like around 22. So what we've got going on is we're going to strap the other direction, give a channel for our electrician to run all of his wires and uh, give us an ability to actually strengthen the floor above as well. Um, whenever we have a soft floor or considerations in the future, the engineers always tell us if you put strapping in the basement, it'll double the strength of the floor above because it stretches out the, stretches out the, the load bearing weight. There's a lot of schools of thought concerning uh, how to insulate or put in a subfloor in a basement. Um, our basic approach is really quite simple. Everybody's seen on TV shows how they use the, the dimpled product out here to uh, waterproof the exterior of the house. But what, the other application for this is you can actually put it on the floor and roll it out um, and create that barrier between the concrete and your subfloor. 
One of the advantages is because it's six and a half feet long, you only have one joint every six and a half feet for the whole length of the basement. So there's really only two tape joints in this whole room, a few hundred square feet. Now, our joints are taped with tuck tape, which makes a, a, it's impossible for moisture to get through that into our subflooring. Subfloor we use is a chipboard true floor subfloor. It's five eighths thick, tongue and groove. It weaves together, then we tap con it down and screw it right into the concrete. Uh, this makes a nice airspace between the concrete and the floor, which is insulator. Airspace is an insulator. It's also uh, nice and quiet and gives us a subfloor that uh, we can put any kind of surface on. You can go over top of this and do ceramic tile or hardwood, for instance, if you wanted to. One of the important things to consider when you're doing a basement renovation, um, especially nowadays, everybody has, it seems like, a, a, a bathroom in the basement that's roughed in. So they've got the pipes already pre-placed underneath the concrete, and there's a lot of temptation there to go ahead and finish the job without getting a city inspector involved. Um, I, we've all seen the TV shows. We don't advise that. Uh, get the inspection. It's, it's worth its weight in gold. Here we have a laundry sink and a stack. It's convenient because the client wants a two-piece bath. So we've just framed in real simple for them. We've opened up the hole to identify where our pipe is. We kind of had a feeling that it was running across here just because there's a clean out in the other corner across the room. Um, that pipe is PVC, it's not ABS like the stack pipe. So, you know, for all of you who don't know, you need a special glue to connect those two together. So we just use the Bosch chipper, open up a hole, dig out the gravel. Uh, plumber's gonna come in and do all the rough in work for us. Uh, then we're going to call the city up and they have a special plumbing inspector who's going to come by and take a look at this job. Once he gives us the okay to close up, then uh, we'll be back in next week to do the drywall. Uh, electrician comes tomorrow. Uh, we've got marked on all of our doors where the hinges go. Very important. So he knows exactly what side of the door to put the light switch. You don't want the light switches all hiding in behind the hinges on the door. Uh, so he'll be down tomorrow to do all the rough in and running the wires. And uh, in a few more days, mechanical will be done. And uh, then it'll be just time to get dirty and drywall it up. Hey, I get to play again. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, whenever you renovate, you always want to have your fan and ductwork nearby so you can pump that dirty air out the window and keep it out of the house. Okay, so before we go any further and we show you how it all turned out, let's talk about some of the rough indecisions that we made on this project and how it can pertain to you and your cost effectiveness. Um, when you've got a basement, you've seen that we did a subfloor system in there. Back when we shot that video, vinyl plank flooring wasn't on the market yet. And it was being introduced, but it was very thin. It was just a surface cover. Nowadays, we have a luxury vinyl plank. This gives us a lot more flexibility because we don't necessarily need a subfloor system unless you know you're having a moisture problem. So if your house is dry or you're not expecting to have moisture issues because of the style of basement, you can just go with vinyl right on the concrete. You can do the same with laminate as well. They do have products now that are water resistant. I just don't like trapping moisture on my floor, which is why I tend to push towards the subfloor concept. But if you're looking for economical, you could just put your flooring right on the concrete. Now in terms of the bathroom, this basement didn't have one when we got started. And they were finishing the basement so that it op operate as an office and as a living space. <sighs> My basic idea is this, if you're going to have a living space on any level of a house, you need to have at least a two-piece bath on that level. People just are not very attracted to a house that has a finished living space, but doesn't have a bathroom on that level for a lot of different reasons. So it's worth it financially. Basically, anytime you have a living space without a bathroom on a, on a floor, open your floor, put in the bathroom, those dollars are returned to you. And if you're smart with your purchases and your fixtures, you'll get that money back when you sell your house, guaranteed. Not even a question, don't even think twice about it, okay? You don't have to necessarily put in a custom shower, but at least a two-piece with a simple vanity and a toilet is fine. And if you're in a situation where opening the floor is not ideal, or you're nowhere near the plumbing vertical lines underneath the floor, you can always go with another product called SantaFlow. It's got pumps on it, and you can take that wastewater from your sink and toilet, and you can direct it through the rafters anywhere into that basement it needs to go. Very effective if you're out in the country or on a septic or in that kind of system. So, now I got people asking me all the time, what kind of flooring should I use in my basement? What's the cheapest option, right? And so, basically, your cheapest option is anything that's gonna get you about $1.20 to $1.50 a square foot. 
and you can get that in a laminate floor. You might be able to find a deal on a really thin vinyl that way, but you can definitely get that on carpet. Now, carpet is good for basements. I know, everybody's thinking carpet, you're gonna get that musty moldy smell, but you don't as long as you install it on an underpad that's designed for concrete floors, okay? There are underpads out there that will not transfer the moisture into your carpet, and you will get great performance out of that for a lot of years, and that is definitely an option because it also gives you that feeling of it being a lot more comfortable and warm. So here's the basic basement. Drop your heat to the floor, just get a basic insulation going on with a good vapor barrier, simple flooring, and you have a living space. If you want a really beautiful living space, you probably already have one upstairs. <laughs> so if you're looking for simple expansion of your home, get it in the basement. I'm telling you right now, you can renovate 800 square feet for less than $10,000 materials and electrician. That's the honest truth. We're just going to go over some of the features of a very basic basement renovation. To, traditional with basements, we've got pillars and posts. Some of them have got sewer lines in them, so there's a clean out. Uh, by code, we have a spring loaded trap door in the wall so you can access that clean out. Over here, we have another spring loaded door in the ceiling. This is to access the sh shutoff valve for the hose bib outside. Uh, this is a wonderful diffuser for the heat system. In the winter time, we can open this right up and get lots of heat. And in the summertime, we can dial it back down. It's just a so simple touch. And that keeps the air conditioning from pumping into the basement. It doesn't need a whole lot of help. Again, basic trims, basic paints. We have an entertainment center over here. So we've got Cat5 wiring. We've got a coax cable and all the other things. Pre-wired surround system. It's all pre-wired so that after the TV goes in, uh, the client will have everything all hooked up and sit there with all of his remotes and enjoy that. This side of the wall over here behind this wall, we've extended two heat runs off the main trunk line um, and bring the heat right to the floor. And these are adjustable as well. And what this does is solves the problem with heat in the basement by bringing the heat under pressure from a five inch to a four inch line, builds up pressure and blows all the way across the floor. So in the future, especially with these clients, are about to have their first baby, when the little gaffer starts crawling around, it'll be nice and warm down here for them. Um, outside of that, all of the lights here are on dimmer switches. Everything is zoned, so we have hallway, we have that room area, we have this room area, all isolated to so have an individual control. Now, let's just talk real quick, as a homeowner, how much of this project you can do on your own. Very key, because the value that you get in your home in a basement is actually overall very low, okay? You don't get a lot of return on your investment when you finish a basement space. So if you wanna keep your return on investment close to your cost, then you really wanna be able to do a lot of this yourself. This minute you start hiring people to do this work for you, you're only gonna see a return of around 50 cents on the dollar, and it'll take years to recover that on the investment of your house going up. If you get a building permit and you wanna add this space and do your own plumbing, you can. You're going to need to know your plumbing code pretty good because they're gonna inspect the rough in as well as the finish. Um, my suggestion in that case, go with the Santa Flow system. Then you don't have to open the floor, you don't have to tie into old existing plumbing, which might run you outside of your expertise. And then it's pretty simple to follow the instructions and do all that according to code. Uh, when it comes to electrical, if you're comfortable doing your own electrical, again, pull an electrical permit, they'll have an inspector come out, make sure your roughing is done properly, and then you can finish all of that off here as well. Outside of that, you just need to know how to do drywall, maybe a couple of interior walls, hang a door, and then put down your flooring. If you choose carpet and you don't know how to do carpet, I'm telling you right now, you're gonna have no success with that. This is not a do-it-yourself product. <laughs> uh, I've tried it a couple of times and failed miserable. I don't suggest it for anybody, but if you wanna go with laminate or vinyl, uh, those are just basically measure and cut, and anybody can do that themselves. So that will keep your costs really low, and you might actually even be able to make a few bucks on your basement. Thanks for joining us in this version of Reality Renovision, our basement edition. Uh, if you're new to the channel and you haven't seen us before, then by all means subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to check the links for other re Reality Renovision uh, videos. And if you have questions, which I'm sure you do, put them in the comment section below. I will answer them myself, I promise. Well, thanks for joining us today. And if you'd like to see the projects that we're doing in the future, hit the subscribe button so you get notified every time we have a new video. 
or check out the link over here and you can check out some of our past projects. While you're making that decision, I gotta find a new color.